Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's quick video, I'm going to explain to you how to 3D print and design these insane vases from scratch. In this process, we're going to use completely free to download softwares. So without further ado, let's jump into the video and let's create some vases. Okay, to start off, we're going to use Fusion 360. This is a completely free to download software. Let's get into it. So I'm just lining out the layout of my vase. So I'm going to have it 20 mil wide by 120 mil tall. Up in the top here, we'll have a sketch curve. I'm just using random click points along my reference lines to create the shape of the vase that I want. As you can see, that looks pretty good. Okay, awesome. So you want to right click here and press OK. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to delete that guideline we just created leaving us with just the vase and the base that we would require. Up on the top here, you will see um, a function called offset. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna offset the line we just created to create the thickness of the vase. I'm gonna do this around about two millimeters wide. So again, going back to sketch here, we're just gonna fill off the sketch. And what this will do is it will create a sketch we can then revolve. As you can see, it went light blue there meaning Fusion 360 recognizes the shape we're about to revolve. Selecting that revolve feature, we're gonna select our sketch here, and then we're gonna click our line of origin, which we want the profile of the sketch to revolve around. So for some reason, there we go, just give it a quick click. Perfect, there we go. And as we can see, this is just a really quick reference to show us the design we've created. So I'm pretty happy with that overall. As we can see, we've got the thickness for the vase and all is looking rather well. So you wanna go ahead and you just wanna finish that extrusion. So just hit okay. And there is our final vase design. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and save this as a .stl file. For some reason it doesn't show up when I'm in my files, but you wanna head over to Mesh Mixer. You wanna hit import and then you wanna select the STL of the vase that we just created. As you can see, here it is in Mesh Mixer. So you wanna select the entire vase, go ahead to edit, and then plain cut. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this model into two pieces. And this is where we're gonna have the transition from the solid plastic into the Veroni style on the top. So I'm just adjusting the plane here somewhere I think would look rather interesting and create a good composition. That looks good. So very important, you wanna go on the top and select slice, keep both, and also no fill. So what this will do initially is when you slice it, it will discard half, but we wanna keep them both. So you can see the blue line here where we've cut our model in half. However, it's still one piece. So head over to edit, and then you wanna go separate shells. And what it'll do is it will bring up this little window where we can hide half of the vase, however, keeping both of the sides of the model. So we only wanna work on the top part here. So I'm just gonna hide the bottom as I just did. And then we're gonna go ahead and create the pattern. To do this, you wanna hit select and you wanna select the entire top. Head over to edit and reduce. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna reduce the triangle count to create a more interesting pattern. So triangle budget at the top there, and if I move this right down, you can see how messed up it makes it. But we want somewhere in the middle. So around about, around about here, I believe. Just so it's nice and interesting when we go ahead and make the pattern. You can do whatever you like here, but this I think will work well. Hit accept, and that is our reduced top part of the vase. So head over to edit now, and then make pattern. This is a really interesting feature on Mesh Mixer because you can create multiple patterns from essentially an outline of a shell. So here is dual edges, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select edges, which to me looks the most interesting and gives it that kind of natural feel. So we can see where we're gonna stick it to the bottom. It's nice and solid and just has this really cool triangle shape pattern in the middle. And this is the element spacing. So this is essentially the thickness. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna bring back the bottom part of our vase. because so I wanna see here um, how well this is gonna to adhere to the base when we glue it later on in the video. So somewhere about 
two millimeters, I think, will align well. So once you've got your nice thickness there, you wanna go ahead on the bottom and just click accept. And what you can't see here is it's basically just processing. So it is taking it from the preview version and creating the actual part that we were going to use further on in the video. Just give it a second to complete. There we are. So here we have our two parts. And then I'm just gonna show you that it's created and kept the shell in the middle as, as well as the pattern, sorry. So you wanna go ahead and just select, I think it's the middle one here. Yeah, perfect. Select that and I'm just gonna hit delete, which is gonna create that nice hollowed out shell effect. And there is essentially our full created vase. So now using this little control panel on the right, you want to select each part individually and you wanna save this so go ahead, hit file, export as STL file. And I'm gonna save this as vase top, and I'm gonna repeat the process and save the other half of the vase as vase bottom. Okay, one thing I didn't mention here, guys, is the part I missed. So we're gonna take the vase bottom. As you can see, it has this red and white stripes in the middle. This meaning it has no mesh on the inside of the model. This is essential for the 3D printing. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all the model, go ahead to edit, and then extrude. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna create a thickness from that initial mesh, as you can see I've just done here. So it's all orange, meaning it's all one part. So go to the offset is our size. And like I said, I want this to be somewhere around the two millimeter mark. This will give us a nice thickness when we print later on. So hit accept, and there we have it. I'm just gonna go ahead and export this as a .sdl for my new vase bottom. Moving on to Cura here, I'm just gonna go and grab the two files we just created in Mesh Mixer and drop them into Cura. And then I'm just gonna rotate these 90 degrees, so rotate, and then make sure your snap rotation is on here. And this means we can snap it to 90 degrees very easily. So repeat the process with both the parts, Okay, and there we have it. So that is our two parts in Cura. Um, you could 3D print this straight away. However, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do mine in dual color, hence why I separated the shells in the first place. And I'm just gonna show you that you need to have a brim here for adhesion, as I'll show you later on in the video. It did not go too well without a brim. So it's just finishing up slicing. Okay, perfect. So as you can see, the blue part on the bottom here it creates a nice layer for which it will adhere to the build plate. Not so much for the part on the left, but the part on the right can have some serious problems if you do not add a brim. So like I said, dual color. So I'm doing the first half here. This is gonna be in gray filament. So I'm just taking my SD card over to my printer, popping it in. And then I'm gonna go ahead over to the screen and then go print from TF card. On here, you can see I've got my vase top and my vase bottom, both ready to go. So. Here we are, starting print on the bottom half of the vase we just created. We're just gonna jump into a really quick time lapse here. So here is like the one and a half hour mark. As you can see, it's come along quite nicely. Um, and here is the two and a half hour mark. So nearly finishing up on this print here, which is amazing. It's looking really good. No problems with the base. Here is the top I tried to repeat the process with. As you can see, it did not come out well. Essentially, it was stringing a lot, which meant my temperature was too high. I reduced my temperature down to 185 degrees. And as you can see, the results are a lot better and a lot cleaner. So this was a very important part of learning that temperature too high on these tiny little models is not a good thing. Low temperature is the key and you need a good brim. So here's the initial one, like I said, with too high temperature. And here is a bigger one I attempted to create. So like I said, that brim is really important. I tried to do it without one and yeah, it made an absolute mess. Um, it's a bit of a waste of filament and a waste of time. However, what I did is I corrected this. I added a brim, reduced the temperature, and here is our final part. As you can see, looking very good, clean, crisp, awesome. Good to go. So here is the larger side of the vase. 
against the 3D printing part on the right. As you can see, there's the brim I used to make sure it adhered and didn't make a mess. So I'm just gonna snap this off. As you can see, nice, stuck. How satisfying is that? So here is our two parts completed. Like I said, both come out really well. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and stick these together. In the future, I would probably make a way to clip these together without using glue. Um, but for the process of this video, I just wanted to explain to you guys how to make this quickly and efficiently. So here is me just adding a couple of dots of super glue on the model here. Um, I've got plenty of surface area and super glue is really quite strong. So I have no issues about this sticking or falling apart later on in the future. So a couple of dots there, flip this over and we're just gonna hold it in place. And within about 30 seconds or so, it should have bonded. And we're nearly there for our finished vase. Like I said, glue is not the ideal way to go for the process of the video. It's quick, easy, and has a very strong bond. So once this is ready to go, I'll just spin it around for you guys and show you. There we are. So this glue will need a couple of hours to harden properly. So we're gonna go ahead and leave it for a couple of minutes and jump into our final vase. And here we go, guys, look at that. Amazing finish on the bottom there. However, the top part has come out relatively well. I think there's a few things that could be improved. Um, we also have a Z seam that's very visible on the bottom. Now this is unavoidable. This is just where the printer changes its layer height when it's printing. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions, please leave a comment. Subscribe helps me out greatly. Thank you much for watching. Goodbye.